Nicole Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about some things that I feel like everybody should know before they start cooking while they're backpacking or even out day hiking. Oh my God. Most of the ground outside is not perfectly flat, but of course you can try to locate as flat of a little piece as you can. But if I notice that the water in my food pot doesn't look quite level and it's kind of tilted, then I'll dig down into the ground with my fuel canister a little bit to try to make things more even and then put my pot back up on top. I use the BRS stove, so since it flares out into such a small surface area, it's really important to make sure that it's as centered as it can be and balanced well up there on the tines so I don't have my meal topple off onto the ground. And I have had that happen before. Also, if you have a food pot that's really smooth on the bottom, they can kind of just skate across the top of a stove, especially one like the BRS, again, that covers such a small surface area. So if you have to rough up your pot a little bit on the bottom to help it have more friction, then that might be something to consider. You can purchase a plastic base type thing. It's got three little legs to just kind of spread things out and make everything more stable. It'll fit to the bottom of a fuel canister. So if that's something you're interested in for training wheels, then definitely go for it. They are not very expensive nor very heavy. The next tip is more about safety. When you're backpacking and you find something like a picnic table, it can be very inviting to be able to sit down on the bench and put your food set up, your cookware, on top of the table. And I am guilty of doing this before. But I've heard a lot of instances where hikers end up knocking over their food pot and boiling water goes all over themselves. And it's even happened where it's gone on other people that are sitting at the table with them. So it's actually a really bad idea. If you're at a picnic table, it's a much better idea to sit up on the bench and then have your food set up down below you while you're cooking. And this is even true in the woods where you don't have a picnic table. You could sit up on a log or a rock and have your cookware below you. But even being level with everything and sitting on the ground with your food pot, you know, a safe distance back so it doesn't topple right onto you is much better than having it elevated above you. According to a doctor at the University of Utah, if you find yourself burned out in the wilderness, the first thing that you should do is try to cool that area off as quickly as possible and get the heat out of it so it doesn't continue to damage the tissue. You'd wanna use cool, preferably filtered water and just flush the area until it actually cools down. It's not a good idea to use snow or ice, but again, just cool, clean water. Then if you do have some sort of unscented soap with you, I don't take stuff like that with me backpacking, but you could clean it. Regardless, you wanna clean it as best you can, even if that is just rinsing it with clean water, and then cover it. It's best to use something that is not gonna to stick to it, since that's gonna be some pretty sensitive skin, but still covering it with something like a clean bandana is better than not covering it at all, just to protect any grime from getting on it while you're out in the middle of the woods. And then, of course, get help and seek medical attention, but they call this the four C's. Cool it, clean it, cover it, and call for help. Next, when you are rehydrating some sort of dehydrated food, you need to make sure that you get the water hot enough to rehydrate it, and also make sure that you let it sit long enough to where it'll absorb the water and you don't end up eating some crunchy food. I know a lot of us can be super impatient, especially after a long day of hiking when we feel like we're starving to death, but I promise you, you're gonna enjoy it a lot better if you are patient and let your water heat up well and then let your food sit. If you aren't just adding boiling water to a food pouch and you're actually making something in your food pot where you add the meal in the food pot also, it helps to have a pot cozy like this because that way you can serve fuel. You don't have to let it sit and boil and stir and increase your risk of knocking your food pot off onto the ground. But you can just let it come to a bowl, add the food, put your pot inside the cozy and then be patient and let it sit. I have a very old video that shows people how to make a pot cozy out of Reflectix material. So I'll link to that in the video description. You should also know if you're at higher elevations 
that it's gonna take longer for your water to boil and also for things to rehydrate. But a lot of these backpacker meals will mention that in the instructions that are listed on the package. Next, keep cooking simple to start with. Some people, before they get out there, they think they're really gonna wanna play chef on trail and then they get out there and they're exhausted from backpacking and they realize, you know, I'm, I just want to make something to fuel my body and then pass out. So if you keep things simple to start with and you don't overcomplicate them, then you'll probably enjoy it starting out. If you decide that you really enjoy the cooking process at camp, then next time you go out, you can always add more ingredients or spices, etc but a lot of folks end up just carrying way more weight than necessary trying to be fancy with it and then they're too exhausted to even fool with it. Not only should you keep the cooking part and the food simple, but your actual setup too. All you really need on trail is a food pot and a utensil and maybe a cup if you're like me and you want to drink coffee while you're eating your oatmeal in the morning. If you're gonna have a cup, then make sure you get one that's got the little increments, the measurements on it. So when you're making your backpacking meals or cooking stuff in your food pot, you've got some way to measure water. There are other ways to do this too, like in your food pot, you can make some little marks that denote one cup, two cups, or a popsicle stick with the different water levels. If you put it down in your food pot, you know, where you should fill to, you can get all sorts of creative with this. Next, for cooking, in my opinion, stoves that have an adjustable flame are preferable to stoves that do not. Most fuel canister stoves, if not all of them, are gonna have a little valve that you can adjust how much flame you want. And alcohol stoves are just gonna have one thing and that's wide open. So if you do end up wanting to get a little fancier with your meals and not just straight boil water every time like maybe cook some bacon in your food pot or just heat something up a little bit that you find on trail like saute some wild mushrooms i don't know <laughs> then you have that ability whereas with the alcohol stove it's probably just going to burn the crap out of everything if you're somebody who thinks that they would appreciate a hot meal after a long day of hiking but you just don't want to have a mess to clean up then prepackaged meals do make things easier, although they are typically more expensive than other options you could cook in your food pot. But with the prepackaged meals, all you have to do is boil water, pour it into the pouch, and then be patient and let it sit. And once you're done eating, sure, you'll have a spoon to wash, but otherwise you just throw the pouch into your trash bag. Some people who don't wanna purchase these more expensive backpacker meals will bring freezer bags and then pour their ramen noodles or pasta sides or things they've dehydrated at home in those freezer bags with boiling water and then let it sit. And while it won't melt the freezer bag, I just don't like the idea of having boiling water in a plastic container. It just sounds like cancer. If I were really adamant about not having a cleanup of food pot, before I would use a freezer bag, I'd get some Mylar bags. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description to some that I've used on trail. Basically, they're the same type of thing that these backpacker meals come in. So I'd feel more comfortable using those than freezer bags. And also they're a great tool if you wanna get real crazy with the cheese whiz and start dehydrating your own meals. Next, long handled spoons are great for not having to put your grubby hands down in these backpacking meal pouches or if you decide to cook in a Mylar bag. And if you're gonna get a long handled spoon, might I recommend that you go on and get one made from titanium. So you spend about $10 in one hit and then you don't have to continue to purchase plastic spoons because they will continue to leave you hanging and break on you at some point. I've been using the same Tokes long handled titanium spoon for years and I'll probably have it for the rest of my days. I get questions about this next one all the time, but the tip itself is don't make cleaning your food pot harder than it has to be. I've got folks that ask me, how do you wash your food pot? Should I bring a sponge and soap? And I've seen people bring like a little piece of uh, one of those half green half yellow sponges and it's got little scrubbers on one side 
and you can do that and you can bring some sort of camp soap or something but honestly again keeping it simple is my main theme on trail when it comes to cooking and so i just use filtered water and my finger and if you just continue to rinse and kind of rub with your finger you'll eventually get it cleaned up if you've got some stubborn stuff sticking on there maybe you burn something then you can get just nature's scrubber a dead leaf and scrub around the sides of your pot with that and then rinse it out one good final time dry it and it's ready to be used again now folks will ask well what should i do with this you know washing gravy this liquid that's in my pot after i've scrubbed it and People will tell you the most leave no trace method is to drink that water, but I can promise you that yakking on the ground after drinking that water, which is what I would do, is not leave no trace, so I'm not gonna do that. What I do is I dig a little hole, and as I'm washing it out, I pour all of my pot gravy in that hole, and then I cover it up. Next, a bandana is a great hot pad for taking your pot off the stove after it's heated up and then also doubles as a great drying rag once you've washed your pot out and you just need to dry it off. And finally, if you're gonna be a cooker, bring not one, but two lighters because there's nothing more frustrating than expecting to cook a meal for dinner and then you don't have a way to light your stove. You could misplace your lighter or maybe it gets wet and it's not functioning properly. So I keep one with my food pot in my food pot setup and I keep the other in my emergency first aid kit. Because even if you run out of fuel, for example, if you've got a lighter, you can start a fire and cook on the fire. But I typically don't subscribe to this two is one and one is none when it comes to backpacking except for ladders well all right y'all that is all i have for y'all today if you found this video useful don't forget to share it with a friend and i would love to hear y'all's tips and tricks suggestions mistakes that you've made with cooking on trail in the comments below because we can all learn from one another thanks so much for watching and we will see y'all next time